Life with the Barbecue is like the first track I wanted to play. I think when I made uh, Life with the Barbecue, I, I didn't really own any house or techno yet. It was just more of a fast hip hop track. After making it, I was more like, oh, started listening to a lot of Theo Parrish and Moody Man and stuff. All the stuff at Rush Hour, just been there for days, you know, looking for tracks I like. I bought my first house records in this store. Always been a place where I got into new music or listened to, uh, to other producers or just, actually I can buy, almost buy records blind here if I know, you know, either Christian or Chris tell me like, yeah, this is your shit. It's always spot on, it's a track I, I kind of want. Here we go. <laughs> my own little tap, you know, this is something that I, I was always dreaming of ever since I, Got into record stores, you know, and have all this selection, and then to have my own in the stores is such an honor, and I feel really blessed. So the track "Use Me Again." For a long time, it wasn't a track at all. It was just a little part from my live show. I don't know who exactly told me, but somebody said to me like, you, "You're totally crazy if you're not make, making a track out of it." Slowly it got more people's attention and like people like Derek May started playing it and Theo Paris and you know, lots of uh, big heroes of me were, were playing this track. I kind of got, got really sick of it, of the whole melody, but I still, still love it, you know, it's like a love-hate relation. I do remember playing Use Me Again on my on a solo night I did, which was like this eight hour set thing, and I kind of had to play it, but I, I also remember I just filtered it and, and talked over most of the track, <laughs> because I couldn't stand playing it anymore, but now the people like it here, yeah, it's kind of an anthem in, in this club. Sometimes it's literally, you know, we just do a track in the studio and then call, uh, Olaf or who's ever working, you know, and so like, we just want to check it if the kick is deep enough or the bass is, you know, right, and just check it and go back. This is super luxury. <laughs> you know that you really have to enjoy this moment in this club because it's going to be gone in like, yeah, one year or so. Makes it makes every night I play here like more, even more emotional. I even can't think about the fact that it's going to be gone, you know. Like, it's gonna be such a big gap in the Amsterdam nightlife. I've been around the world and back again. Back again. Back again. As last track, I uh, chose uh, True Friends because it's, uh, it's on a new album. I like retreated for a month to a uh, sort of forest cabin to be away from uh, Amsterdam and all the city hype. The location was really isolated, but a lot of friends came over and we had lots of, lots of good times. But it was really focused on the music though. There was like two rules, you know, no internet and no phones. If you do that you, you, and you make music, you sometimes get into a certain weird time zone, you know, where day and night don't really matter anymore because you don't have any appointments anyway tomorrow or the day after. And I really wanted to reach that, like freedom. For this album, I, I really tried to like, take the inspiration from close home, you know. Also because I was kind of secluded in this forest house and just only allowed friends to be there. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a famous singer. It does really feel like a long time coming to a moment where you can like drop your album and, and do like a, a boiler room in your hometown. I'm pretty proud of, of all the people around me and of, of, of the scene we have in Amsterdam. In the end, that's, this is where I'm from, you know, this is Amsterdam, so 
I'm a, I'm a Amsterdam kid. I, I love to showcase to the world what it's about. Thank you.